Welcome back to Aunt Susie's Kitchen. Today, we're making these delicious sandwich cookies, also known as Linzer tarts. These are flavored with almond and are filled with raspberry preserves. You'll soon see why these are one of America's favorite cookies. So let's gather our ingredients and head to the kitchen. So the first thing we wanna do is make our Linzer tart shells. And we refer to them as shells because they are the two components that hold in all of that delicious jam we're gonna use later. I've mixed my dry ingredients already. I have three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. I didn't sift these ingredients. Uh, I just gave them a little mix, and I'm gonna just put that to the side. So in my stand mixer now, I am going to cream a half a cup of butter, and that butter is at room temperature, and one cup of sugar with two tablespoons of either milk or cream, whatever you have on hand. I had cream today, so that's what I used. And that's two tablespoons. Put that in there. And I'm just going to cream these together on low until they're well incorporated. Okay, that's good. And now I'm going to add two eggs. And I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. And I don't always do this, but every once in a while, I'll add some pure almond extract, and that's what I'm gonna do this time. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of almond extract. And then I'm just gonna turn the mixer back on and let everything mix really well and get light and fluffy. And then I'll scrape the bowl down and let it mix for about another minute or two. So this is perfect. This is exactly what you're looking for. Take this paddle off so you can really get in there and see. And this is so light and fluffy. Look how pale it is. And so you know that this is exactly where you want to be. Okay, we're going to get those dry ingredients and I'm going to mix those in in two or three different additions until it's mixed together well. We don't want to over mix it, but we definitely want to mix it well. I'm just going to add that flour mixture one spoon at a time until it all comes together. That almond smells so good. So I like every once in a while, do something different. You could use a uh, lemon extract if you wanted to. You can use a little bit of um, anise or anisette. And then you can pair it with different types of jams. And this is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so just get the rest of this dough out of here. And if you wind it with any dry pieces on the bottom of the uh, mixing bowl, don't panic because you could always give this a quick knead one time, not too much, and just bring everything together like that. You get these little pieces. I like to take a piece of dough and you can pick up all those little rogue pieces. That's all. All right, so now I just want to form this into a one inch rectangle square, whatever's easier for you. I'm gonna fold the plastic up and over it. And that's it. Now, around the holidays, uh, Christmas especially, when I'm making, you know, 10 or 15 different kinds of cookies, I like to do my batter in advance. And you certainly can do that. I would take this now and put it in the refrigerator. I would make a note on it so I know what it is because cookie doughs all look alike when they're in the refrigerator. And I would just mark what they were in the day that I made the dough. And then within two or three days, I would use it and I would just take it out of the refrigerator about an hour before I'm ready to roll it and it would be ready to go. But for today, since we're gonna roll these out today, I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator for about three hours and then I'll pull it about 15 minutes before we're ready to roll it. So my dough is ready and I've 
cut it in half because I'm gonna work with half of it at a time. And the half that I'm not using, I'm going to just put to the side. And whenever I roll out dough or even pie crust, I like to roll it in between two sheets of parchment paper. This allows me to roll it out without having to use any flour. Okay, so I have my rolling pin and I'm just gonna very carefully. Actually, let's see. I'm about a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. So that's good because by the time you're done putting two of these together, it'll be a nice, soft sandwich and I think we're good. So what I'm going to do now is choose my cutter. And Valentine's Day coming, I think I'm going to use my heart shape cutter. And then of course we want to make sure that we have a smaller cutter that fits inside that in order to have the top piece so that the jam can fit through. So what we would do is we would cut a bottom and for every bottom we need a top. So the top would actually have this piece cut out in the center. I'm gonna wait until they're on the tray before I cut the center out, because if you cut the center out and then you try to use the spatula to move them, they'll lose their shape. They'll keep their shape much better if you keep them like this, and then those centers will get cut out at the end. You don't always have to do, I mean, when I do these for Christmas, I usually use a round cookie cutter, and I'll use a round cutter like this, and that'll be my top. I'm sorry, and that'll be my bottom. And then my top, I'll use, um, I have a, just a round circle that I use, and it is a, a gunoli form. And I'll just use the end of that to pop out a circle in the center. Um, you can do square. I have some square cookie cutters here. And what I like about these cutters is, this side is just square and straight. You can use that to make little sandwiches if you want it. But this one is um, fluted on the end, so it makes it a little bit more fancy. And what I like with these is you can orient them in such a way that instead of them looking like a square, they'll look like a diamond and you can do your heart shape in the center and that would be a nice cookie for Valentine's Day as well. But we're gonna keep it simple and I'm gonna do some heart shaped ones. And remember, I still have half the dough left. So if we decide that we wanted to do a different shape later on, we certainly could. When you're using your cookie cutter, make sure you push down and try not to rock it from side to side because you're definitely going to change the shape of your, your cutout. You don't wanna do that. So you just wanna go straight down. Make sure you make contact with the bottom of the paper. And you also wanna make sure that you fit as many as you can um, in, one, you know, in one time of rolled out dough because you don't wanna to have to keep rolling and re-rolling this dough because eventually it will get tough, although it's, it's a very forgiving dough. I've never had a problem with rolling it out more than once, but let's see, what's the best way? They start getting a little odd shaped after a while. Um, let's do this, let's go around the base here, and I can come back here with this one. And as you see, you get a lot of cookies out of one time, you know, rolling the dough out. And I think that's it. I don't think I'll get any more out from there. So what I'll do now is I have my, my parchment lined pan. I have a 350 degree oven heating. Let me move this over here just a little bit so you can see me move these. This is all wasted dough. And by that, I just mean it's not dough that you have a cookie in right now and it's not garbage. We're gonna re-roll that out. But you're just gonna start picking your cookies up very carefully and laying them on your pan. Now these cookies, they will rise a little bit, but they don't spread. So you can basically put them right next to each other. You don't have to worry about leaving room for them to spread. And then once I get them on the tray, we'll count them out. We'll see how many we have. Because what you wanna do is, you wanna make sure that half of them wind up getting the top cut out. So if we rolled out, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we did 14 of these. So seven of them 
will be regular, just like this. And seven of them, we will use our smaller heart-shaped cookie cutter and we'll cut out the center and that'll be the top. So we need to make one top and one bottom. So two cookies makes one finished cookie sandwiched. And that's it, that's simple. These are gonna go in that 350 degree preheated oven and they're only gonna bake for about eight minutes. I'm gonna put them on the center rack. We do not want these to get brown. This is not a cookie you're looking for a golden brown. You want it to come out looking fairly cooked. And obviously you want it set and we'll show you how to check that. But you don't want it to be browned at all because what'll happen is as they cool, they'll get crispy. And this is not a crispy cookie. This is a soft, delicate sandwich cookie. So let me just move this to the side and now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna cut out the center. So I'm gonna grab the smaller heart and we're gonna do half of these. So we'll do every other row. You wanna make sure it's nice and centered and you just wanna push down and this will pop out. Now you can bake that if you want. You can chocolate dip that. You could make it a garnish for the cookie. Me, I just am gonna roll it again and just make more cookies with it. So we're gonna do half of these. So there are 12 cookies on this tray six of them need to have the centers come out. And that's all we're gonna do is just pop those out. That's four. Five. And six. Okay, I'm gonna get these in, a, in the oven. Like I said, I preheated a 350 degree oven we're going to check them in eight minutes. Okay, so look at these. These are done. Look how beautiful they look. They puffed up beautifully. And even though it's a light and fluffy dough and make a really nice tender cookie, it's managed to keep all of its fluted edges. And that's detail that's really pretty. So I'm going to take these off of this pan because I don't want them to cook any longer than they already have been. And I'm gonna just take, leave them on the parchment and I'm gonna slide them onto a cooling rack. Okay, so my cookies are all done baking. And when I take them out of the oven, I leave them on the parchment paper and then just slide that either onto the top of my stove grates or I can put them on a cooling rack. And then when I feel like they're cool enough to handle, usually about 10 minutes, I will remove them off of the parchment paper and just place them on a wire rack like this. And I'll let them cool here for at least a half an hour, 45 minutes. Sometimes if it's really, really cold outside, I can take the rack and either put it in my garage for a few minutes or even on my back deck and let them cool quickly there. Now from here, if you're not gonna use them right away, you can store these in an airtight container for a week or two if you keep them in the refrigerator for up to a month or longer if you put them in your freezer. And when I store them, I like to put a piece of wax paper or parchment in between each of the layers so that they don't stick together. And then when I'm ready to use them, I just take them out, bring them to room temperature and fill them. And that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna fill them. That is my favorite part. Okay, this is my favorite part. We're gonna fill these cookies. So typically what I'll do is, I have the parchments that I used yesterday because I like to recycle. And I'm gonna put the tops down first and I'm gonna powder sugar them. And you have to generously powder sugar them. This is not a very sweet cookie dough and that powder sugar is a necessary component that brings all of these flavors together. So you wanna put a nice coat of powder sugar on them. And then we're gonna take our bottoms and we're gonna fill them. Now, traditionally, Linzer tarts are filled with raspberry jam that has seeds in it. I personally do not like seeds. So I buy raspberry jam that is seedless. It, you know, I notice that it's not, you can't always get it at the grocery store, um, but I definitely can always get it around the holidays 
So when you put this on, you wanna go just short up to the edge. You don't wanna go all the way to the edge, because if you do, it'll squirt out. And you always wanna put a generous little dollop in the center there, because when we lay our lids on, you want it to come through. Look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. And these by far make probably one of the prettiest um, you know, cookie trays or you know, gift baskets, whatever, whatever you decide to do with yours. Um, they really are a pretty cookie. In addition to being delicious, they're very pretty to look at. And they always have that wow factor. You know, everybody thinks they're so complicated to make, but they're really not. I just, you know, showed you with just a few simple steps and a little bit of patience. You can definitely master this recipe and these cookies very easily. Now, here's an alternate for those of you that don't like jams or jellies. I have a little bit of chocolate buttercream left from something else I did last week. And I, anytime I have leftovers of anything, I really just throw it in the refrigerator and see if I eventually have a use for it. And usually I'll think of something, so this is no exception. And the same with this, I want you know, a nice generous amount in the center there. And then I'm just gonna sandwich that down. Look how pretty that was an accident, but that actually looks kind of cute with that little swirl right there. So we'll put that one here. And then we'll do just one more so we finish off our plate. And again, you know, I've done these with all kinds of jams. I've never used jelly, but I've used jams. I've used homemade preserves. In fact, if you go check out my videos, I have a strawberry preserve recipe that's pretty darn delicious. And strawberry is really good in these also. Strawberry and the almond, if you decide to do the almond, they go together beautifully. I've done apricot preserves. Those go together really well. And that's it. There are your Linzer tart cookies. Look how pretty that is. And they taste even better than they look, I promise you that. And just in case you don't believe me, I'm gonna give one a try right now. Mmm, that is really good. And that chocolate really tastes good with that little bit of almond in the back. But I think the preserve filled ones will always be my favorite because this is how we grew up eating them. And look how nice and thick that cookie is. It's the perfect thickness. It makes really makes a substantial cookie. It's not one of those cheap little wimpy cookies and now you know why we refer to the tops and the bottom as the shells, because they are the components that hold in all that lovely jam, jelly, buttercream, whatever you decide to put in it. I'm sure you can put some chocolate ganache in there if you want it to. You could put some meringue in there. You could put lemon curd in there. Uh, possibilities are endless, but like I said, the traditional ones are just made with the raspberry preserves, the ones that have the seeds in them but you can go to town and make these however you want. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for coming by and spending some time with us. I hope you learned a thing or two about rolled cutout cookies and how easy they really are to make. Please come back and see us again. Make sure you stop by social media and say hi. We're Aunt Susie's Kitchen on Facebook, Aunt Susie's Kitchen on Instagram, and of course here, Aunt Susie's Kitchen on YouTube. Please hit the subscribe button if you like what you saw today and make sure you come back and see us again real soon because there's always something good cooking in Aunt Susie's kitchen. Ciao for now.